And oh, we had to work for that applause for you, Joe. We had to work for that applause. Um, and we're thankful that Joe, Joe is here because Joe is a real life missionary. Well, Chad, funny you mention it because everybody here is a missionary. Huh. In Explain. fact, we're having a conference to celebrate this called the J2E3 right here at Hills Corners. Registration ends today. Go online, sign up. It is free. We understand it's during the middle of the week, and you're like, I can't take work off for that, although you probably should. But I know that I'm speaking at a 6.30 p.m. session, so I know that if you can only make it to some, Pastor Wood, will they still get a shirt if they can only register for some? You get a free shirt and free food and free speeches and all sorts of things. So register. That's in June. Check it out. There's information in your bulletin. We're also asking that um, you consider donating books. Um, there's a brownie troop from second grade of Hales Corners and um, Hales Corners Lutheran School. And that second grade brownie troop is collecting books for ages, kind of targeting four-year-old to eight-year-old. Um, if you want more information on that, we encourage you to look at the back of the welcome folder. Pastor Speaks can't be here today, but he did provide you with this video message. Hi everybody, this is Pastor Keith, Senior Pastor of Hales Corner Lutheran Church. It is a, a joy to come and visit with you. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you today, but I needed to talk to you about this opportunity that God seems to be giving to us. He seems to be leading us to, uh, to an adventure together. Uh, an adventure that's going to redesign our worship life so that everybody, every Sunday, has the opportunity to love the worship style and the music and the offering that's given in that place at that time. He seems to be giving us an opportunity that's gonna, gonna unite our school life into one campus so that we can make sure that we are keeping more and more of our students and not losing them from building to building and we can provide a campus for them that's everything and more that we need in this day in this age for the sake of ministry of excellence the other thing that he's giving us opportunity to do is to to reposition the entire ministry for the for the mission and the ministry that he has in store for us as we move forward together I am very excited about the opportunity that God seems to be giving, but I need you. We need you. We need, we need your involvement. We need your ideas and we need your opinions. So I want you to do me a favor. I want you to prayerfully read the case statement that's, that's available to you. I, I want you to uh, see the vision that, that we have. And, and as we move forward, watch it unfold. Um, there's also a survey connected to this case statement. Um, fill out that survey and get it in the mail. There'll, there'll be an envelope that'll come with the survey. Get it in the mail by the 29th of, of May uh, so that we can get all of your input um, and we can collate all of that and we can find out what the people of God are thinking about the opportunity that God seems to be given then we'll use that and other kinds of, of things that we're doing by, kind of behind the scenes to try and figure out what God's will is for this. We'll bring all of that to a congregational meeting in August so that we can pray, seek God's will, uh, inspire the faith of the people of God um, to what God would have us do, and then make a godly decision about the future course around a capital campaign, around a building project, around the vision and the mission that God has for us out in the future. So please pray about this, get involved, and come and help us by filling out that survey and getting it into us by the 29th. Thanks. He ends the video in a wave, so I always feel the need to wave back. I don't know why. Um, with that being said, a reminder that those surveys will be given out at the doors on the way out of church, or you can go to the church website to get that information and then process those surveys. With all the announcements out of the way, we get just to the joy in the heart of worship. I invite you to stand up and greet each other.
As God's family, we are called and gathered to worship, grow, and be sent to make a difference in the world for Christ. Our worship service is marked by the triune God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As God's children, we go to God seeking his forgiveness. God, we come to you asking for your forgiveness. We have not loved you and put you first. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves and put them before us in our lives. Because of Christ's work on the cross, we are forgiven children. Because of the forgiveness we receive, we are free to forgive our neighbors. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all Rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great. 
Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God had three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, Lion and the Lamb, Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names. Word My heart will sing, how great is our God. Name above all names. Name above all names. Worthy of all praise. My heart will sing, how great. Our God, how great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God, how great. How great, how great is our God. We indeed worship a great and triune God, and today as our profession of faith, we take time to read the third article together, profess that together, and then read its meaning as well. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. As Diana Bartholomew, our elementary school principal, comes forward, I invite you to read with me on the screen our memory verse from Psalm 139. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your hand shall hold me. Please be seated. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of John, chapter 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, 
Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Here ends the word of the Lord. We invite the kids forward for the children's message. All right, save a spot for me now. Save a spot for me. It's a good problem to have that I'm getting crowded out of the children's message, to be honest with you. Can I? It's because you like me so much? That's a wonderful thing to hear. I want to get everything set up because I just dropped this and then it wasn't working. All right, good. I like this. Well, here's what I want to ask. I want to ask is, have you ever seen the wind do anything? Have you ever seen the wind do anything? Take a second to think before we answer. Have you ever seen the wind do anything? Has everyone had that second? All right, tell me something you have seen the wind do. Oh, did you hear what she said? She said she's seen the wind blow down the leaves, and then you get the joy to rake them and jump in them. What else have you seen the wind do? Whoa, powerful wind, wasn't it? It did its job. It blew down a tree. What else have you seen the wind do? You can't see the wind. I agree with you. You can't see the wind. But what can you see the wind do? Yes. Oh, a whole forest we're up to. It can take down a whole forest. Yes. It could blow your hat off your head. Just whoop. Yep, I've seen that happen. We'll say that again. Wind can make fire. It can spur on fire because the fire needs oxygen to breathe. Yep. You got to be a little louder. Ooh, branches down. Is that what you said? Yep. What about when you're on the water? What happens? Have you ever been, um, have you ever gone down, down to Lake Michigan or maybe by an ocean? What does the wind do there? It can blow sand in your eyes, and that hurts a little bit, yeah? It can make waves. Have you ever seen a boat that's powered by the wind? What is that called? A sailboat, and you can drive north or south of Milwaukee, and you can see these big things in fields going like this. What are those called? Windmills. I want to show you what the wind does. You ready? Start my blow dryer. I practiced this last night at home. It was a dry run. Dry humor. Ready? Watch what the wind can do. We can see the effects of the wind, right? We see what the wind does. What's the wind doing right now? What's it doing? Yeah, it's keeping a ping pong ball. But you know what? Can we see the wind? We still can't see the wind. Here, let me try this. What if I take and I put wind in something? What Can we see the wind then? Let's see. Huh. Can I see the wind? But I can see what's holding the wind, can I? Well, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit lives in you. That you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. That God lives inside of you. So while I can't look at you and see the Holy Spirit, what does the Bible promise is in your heart? What does the Bible promise? The Bible promises that God lives inside you, that you are a temple of God. And I can't see the wind inside this balloon, can I? But what I can see inside there is the effects of the wind. 
I see what the, what the wind is doing inside. And the Bible makes it clear, ready? The Bible makes it clear, you can take that home with you. Um, the Bible makes it clear that God lives inside of us. Let's go to the Lord and give him thanks, shall we? Can you repeat after me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being our God. Thank you for living inside of us. And thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Please let us share the gifts you gave us with others. Amen. Thank you for coming up here this morning. shepherd faithful forever your hand is strong where my faith is weak close as my heart beat you won't forsake me you are the love that will carry me and I won't be afraid I will trust your heart and say, I will never, ever, ever walk alone. You are with us, for us, always holding on. Though I wonder your love goes further, you are my hope and future. I will never walk alone. Questions may haunt us, casting a shadow. Still you're the hope and the fire in me. I will not tremble. I will not stumble. You are my courage, my bravery. And I won't be afraid. I will trust your heart and say, I will never, ever, ever walk alone. You are with us, for us, always holding on. Though I wonder your love goes further. You are my hope and future. I will never walk alone. Surely your goodness and mercy will light up the way set before me. Surely your grace will pursue me all my days, all my days. Surely your goodness and mercy will light up the way set before me surely your grace will pursue me all my days all my days i will never ever ever walk alone you are with us for us always holding on i will never ever ever walk alone you are with us for us always holding on though i wonder your love goes further you are my hope and future 
future, I will never walk alone. I will never walk alone. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this point in time. We thank you, Lord, for um, being a God that's different than all the other false gods that the world promises. Not a God that um, leaves us alone and leaves us stranded, but a God that walks with us and a God that um, actually lives inside of us. I ask, Lord, that um, as we have a chance to unfold your word today, I ask, Lord, that um, you let truths be revealed however you want those to be revealed. I ask, Lord, that you let your word accomplish um, your mission in our lives. I ask that you let your word produce fruit. I ask, Lord, that you let your word dwell richly inside of us. And then I ask, Lord, that that would spur us on in our communities, in our homes, and in all the different relationships that we have, that people would see something different about the Christians, that would, people would see something different about um, the fact that um, you are in our heart. All this we ask and are thankful for in your most precious and holy name. Amen. Today we're going to be in Scripture, we're going to be in the New Testament. If you have a Bible on your phone, you can open that up. If you don't have a Bible on your phone and you have the Bible memorized, that's great. I'll just call on you at the right time to share that Scripture reading. Um, if you don't have the Bible on your phone or you don't have the Bible memorized, uh, we encourage you to grab a Bible from one of the pew racks that is um, located in the back of the church or in the middle section of church. I could tell you how God loves you, or you could be in God's Word and see how God loves you. Right? You could get experience working with a group of Christians, a group of believers, diving into God's word together. You would not want me on your computer reading all your emails to you, would you? You would just want to get that from the author of the email. I'm telling you that the author of the Bible right, gives you this gift. So my prayer is that um, you would be in that word with us today. There's a great story, and this story is about a parachuter. And this parachuter jumps out of a plane... And we don't know if it's the pilot's fault. We don't know if the parachuter missed time to jump. We don't know if the wind picked up when the parachuter jumped. But somehow, the parachuter missed his intended mark. So the parachuter lands, and the parachuter is miles off course. And if that's not a bad scenario, when he missed his mark, he landed in a tree. And if that isn't a bad scenario, night is starting to set. And all of a sudden, while this parachuter is hanging there, a passerby is walking his dog. And the parachuter yells down, where am I? Can you help me? And the passerby kind of looks up and sees the man hanging in the tree. And he says, well, you're stuck in a tree and it's getting dark. And the parachuter says, of all my luck, the person that's here to rescue me is a pastor. And the, the pastor by is like, how did you know I was a pastor? Because pastors um, give you the absolute truth, but though that absolute truth is utterly useless in helping you. So often when we present things, we present things, and I'm not saying it happens here, I'm saying it happens in every church, we present things as this truth, but how does it fit into your life? Um, I got an opportunity to teach on the Holy Spirit as a middle school teacher and teaching theology classes for many years, and the number one way that I taught on the Holy Spirit was when I taught them how to dance. Right? When I taught them how to dance. I would go through this long list of qualifications. You want to stand up, Pastor Rob? You were you an old player. I used to coach you. I would go through this long list of expectations for them. And the very last rule when they were dancing was that I always said, you need to leave room between you. I showed them the proper spot for hands. But I also said, you need to leave room between you and your partner. Enough room for the Holy Spirit. Right? And then I would take the Bible and I'd place it this way to make sure that they knew not to get too close to their partner while they were dancing. Right? That's probably the best way that I taught on the Holy Spirit for my years in school. And the reason, you can sit back down, thank you. You're a missionary, go sit down. Um, and the reason why I taught it that way was because, guess what? There's so much unknown. We can see the effects of the wind, but we can't see the wind. 
We can see what it's doing on forests. We can see what it's doing on windmills. We can see what it's doing on boats. We can just sit in our backyard and we can hear it. But we don't know where it starts and we don't know where it ends. And the Holy Spirit is this gift, this gift of the unknown. We can clearly see God the Father as the creator. We can clearly see God the Son, Jesus Christ, as the redeemer. And then we get to the Holy Spirit, the sanctifier, right? God living inside of us. What I'd like to do is in the book of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, so you're in the New Testament, the book of John chapter 3, I'd like to look at somewhat of a case study of the Holy Spirit at work. John chapter 3, so I'll give you time to find that. Understand, I really do want you in the Word. Like, it's a joy that you know this stuff. John chapter 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher and that you come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. You have a gentleman who was a leader in the Jewish church. A, a, and, um, he was actually on the Sanhedrin, like one of the extreme Jewish rabbis, one of the highest levels of knowledge. And something hits him on his heart that in the middle of the night, I don't know if it was something where he heard Jesus teach during the day, but something that Jesus said to him caused him not to be able to rest. And he, in this moment of unrest, in the middle of the night, approaches Jesus. He goes out and he seeks Jesus. Huh. There's about three weeks in, a, in Wisconsin when it's worth living here. We're in the middle of one of those weeks right now, right? And for some reason, and you can look at a children's message with an altar area that's crawling with kids. For some reason, it's on your heart to raise your kids differently. For some reason, it's on your heart to be in a marriage where you want to give time to God. When many other families are sitting there and their kids are watching TV, or many other families where, that are sitting there and they're enjoying a cup of morning coffee and they're reading a newspaper on their back patio. And the Holy Spirit, just like the Holy Spirit brought Nicodemus to Jesus, the Holy Spirit brings you to church. There's a joy when God lives inside of you, being in the house of God, and being in the house of God with what? Fellow Christians. Does that make sense, Mrs. Neighbor? Good. Nicodemus sought after Jesus. And then when he sees Jesus, guess what he does? Then guess what? When he sees Jesus, he calls him God. He says you're either from God, or God is with you, or something is different about you. There's many people in history that would say Jesus is an absolutely great prophet. There's many people in history that say Jesus is a great teacher. There's a lot of people in, in the world that would say Jesus is a lot like Gandhi, or Jesus is a lot like Mother Teresa, where they just have these great um, cultural and moral behaviors that we all should follow. But Nicodemus, a teacher in the Old Testament, a teacher of Old Testament history, sees Jesus, and guess what he calls him? He calls him God. Here you sit in a church when many other people would call Jesus something else, and guess what you profess? Guess what you call Jesus? This is really a question. What do you call Jesus? You call him God. That's not by your own doing. You can't identify Jesus Christ as God unless the Holy Spirit is in you. Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher and that you come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Verse 3, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered. Here's Nicodemus. He's got this conversation going with Jesus. And you've got to imagine what Jesus is feeling at this point in time. Like Jesus is sitting there as true God and he's seeing the Holy Spirit and he's seeing this like interaction. And have you ever read something in the Bible and it's totally unclear to you? Have, has this ever happened to you, yes or no? If it hasn't happened to you, I want to sit at your feet and I want you to unfold scripture for me, right? Because here I am, I can read a Bible verse 15 times and some new truth will be unfolded in it. And here is Nicodemus, and when he doesn't understand, he goes back into it, he craves Jesus' word, and he asks Jesus clearer questions about it. 
And Jesus answers, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Right? Jesus is making it very clear what happens in baptism. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. This new birth is a gift from God. There's an art exhibit right now. And this art exhibit is at a museum in New York at one of the Met Art Museums. And what it does is it shows artwork from the Renaissance all the way to the recent history that is unfinished artwork. Numerous things could have happened as to why these 149 pieces of art aren't finished. Something could have happened to the illustrator of the artwork, where they either lost the ability to illustrate or they lost the fire for what they were drawing. Some of the artists that were interviewed said, I don't want to tell you how these stories end. I don't want to tell you what she's holding. I don't want to tell you um, what is going on in this picture because if I illustrate it completely, every time you see that picture, guess what you're going to see? What I want you to see. And I want you to envision what's at the end. One of my favorite pieces, um, it was either from the late 1960s or the 1970s. This is a gentleman that sat down for his first portrait, for his first drawing, right? And the artist, you can see, stenciled in the silhouette, added the color, and then that gentleman got drafted to the Vietnam War. He never came back for his second sitting. This entire thing is unfinished artwork. Nicodemus, dealing with the Holy Spirit, was unfinished artwork. You, in this process, there's days that I have good days and there's days that I have bad days. I'm unfinished artwork. Scripture says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, for we are his workmanship. Who is our author? God. We are his workmanship. And you can look at another one, you can say it's Greek masterpiece. For we are his masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So here we are, all at different stages of being set apart by the Holy Spirit. Good days, bad days, but what does it look like? Um, in your Bibles, I ask that uh, you turn to the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. This is the brush strokes that the artist uses. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who have belonged to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. There's a joy for me in the beginning of a worship service when you see this place go wild with people sharing God's love with each other. When you give people just a chance to greet each other, and Pastor Rob, I was hoping he'd never come up here today. He goes, I eventually got to begin this worship service. Eventually you have to, yes. But it's neat to watch this. And I could take you out into civilization with the rest of the people that you're unsure if they're Christians or not, and guess what? You're very timid to do. Greet each other. Right? We get a chance to welcome babies into the family of God. We get a chance to welcome new members in the family of God. We, we get to see miracles all the time in the gift of the Lord's Supper. Think about how the Holy Spirit rolls in a place like this. You brought canned goods or different produce or different products from your house. We have volunteers collecting them. There's people up here that I know, being in the life of a church worker, could be doing other things on a, on a Saturday night and then all Sunday morning and then also Sunday night. But guess how they're using the gifts that God gave them? I get a joy to be able to sit in a Bible study on Tuesday nights and I get to work with um, people and one guy will say, you know what, like, I haven't opened my Bible since high school. And after two or three years, this person is now giving us Bible passages. Or people that say, you would have never, ever been able to recognize me ten years ago with the way that I was. Or people that say, um, 
you know, like, gentlemen that are deciding it's finally time to, to get engaged after we're in God's word and saying, like, living with the person just isn't right anymore. The Holy Spirit is alive. You start working with people in marital counseling, and when you work with them in marital counseling, and there was infidelity or some sort of um, cheating, and they have in their heart to find forgiveness. We can't forgive unless we know what we were forgiven from. It's part of God's nature to be forgiving. We have a church full of the fruit of the Spirit. But what happens if no one ever gets to know anyone and no one ever shares that fruit of the Spirit? What happens if we have all this ripe produce, all this wonderful orchards and vineyards full of the fruit, and we never lean into each other to share it? It's already um, an interesting aspect that you're in church this morning. It's already an interesting aspect that you decide to give an offering. But there's so much more. My prayer and my goal is that you'd recognize the Holy Spirit at work on your heart. Not only would you recognize the Holy Spirit on your heart, but then when you approach other people, when you're engaged with other people, guess what? You'd see the work of the, um, the Holy Spirit in their life as well. So from one of God's unfinished masterpieces to the rest of God's unfinished masterpieces, I'm thankful for the time that we have together, and I'm also thankful for what happens when we're all raised from the dead together. It's a promise from God. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this point in time, we invite our ushers forward to collect the offering. Sing with us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Yeah, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us.
there's a joy right, when you have those fruits of the Spirit and God encourages you to share those gifts, those fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, goodness, all those great things. And you get a chance to share those with kids. When God gives you a talent, Gloria, and you get a chance to share those talents with kids, right? Come on up, please. Um, we have an opportunity to say thank you today um, to a teacher that was able to see those gifts shared with kids and, through the gift of God, see those gifts um, planted and being used again. Diana, will you tell us about that? This morning we have the honor and privilege to um, recognize one of our elementary school teachers this morning, um, Gloria Lawrence, as she gets ready to retire at the end of this school year. Um, Gloria has been in education since 1974, and for the last 11 years, she's been a teacher here at Hales Corners Lutheran School in first, second, and third grade, but most notably is one of our fantastic kindergarten teachers. Gloria has a passion within her to share um, with children and their families, to teach them all those academics, but most importantly, she's passionate about sharing her Savior with them reminding them that Jesus loves them. And she has touched so many lives of students, of families, in her years here at Hills Corners and at other Lutheran schools. And we are so grateful for that. It's been an honor and a privilege for me to walk alongside of ministry and with Gloria. Um, she's been an awesome role model of what it means to be a servant leader. And we will miss her. Um, but I'm confident that God is going to pour out many blessings on her retirement as she gets a chance to do some things with her grandchildren and to continue ministry in other ways. So we're very thankful, Gloria, and appreciative of all that you've done and the many lives you've touched. This Friday evening, we were able to share uh, at our Fine Arts Festival a gift with Gloria from uh, our church and school, but I think it would be appropriate to take some time this morning and to thank Gloria as well again for her great ministry here. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for Mrs. Lawrence. We thank you for all the kids that called her that over the years, uh, for the kids who are now uh, parents of their own and who are now uh, raising kids of their own. Lord, we, we thank you for the legacy that she leaves in her wake as she steps into retirement uh, to just be Gloria and to just be Grandma and Mom. Lord, we thank you for the uh, the upcoming wedding. We thank you for uh, the grandkids that are continuing to grow. Uh, we thank you for all the opportunities that you are giving uh, Gloria to step out into this new stage in life, going with you, uh, knowing that she has done a good job and that you have blessed her as a teacher. Lord, we ask you that you would continue to bless her in her new roles in life and let her know that wherever she goes, she goes in your name and with you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Gloria. Well, when you're gone for a few months, you never know what they're going to change. New prayer book, black this time. I like that. See the spirit moving here in these prayer requests, especially a prayer of thanks. Um, and a prayer of rejoicing that a father has passed away. Um, his suffering from cancer has ended and he's at eternal rest uh, with God. A prayer for healing of a mother who's in the hospital because of a fall for a business meeting that happens tomorrow that positive results would happen. A prayer of thanks for a wife's successful hip surgery uh, for good test results on Tuesday. A prayer for Jay and Katie as they deal and mourn the loss of their son. Prayer for a son's test to go well this week and get an answer to his to health issues. I invite you to pray as we come before the Lord. Also, uh, I invite you to stand. Um, and also want to lift up uh, Albert Amling, our school superintendent, who has been hospitalized this weekend undergoing tests. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given us the opportunity to come before you. That we have the opportunity to come before you as your people that you sent us your son Jesus so that we could have this opportunity, but more than that, you sent us your spirit. And Jesus breathed out his spirit upon us, upon his disciples, so that we could be the ones who bring the good news of Jesus. Father, without the spirit, we wouldn't be able to believe. Without the spirit, we wouldn't be here today. 
And so we thank you that you have given us these incredible gifts, that we are always welcome in your house, at your table, regardless of what we've done or where we've been. Father, I pray that you would be with those who suffer today, those who are sick, hospitalized, those mourning the loss of loved ones. I also pray with those who have reasons to rejoice today. Father, that you would be with them as they see the only reason we have reasons to rejoice and that good things happen is because of your love and grace and mercy in our lives. I pray that you would be with each and every one of us, be with those who are away serving on our behalf, those who are living their job faithfully, whether here or whether far away. Father, make us bold to be your people, realizing that the Spirit really does dwell within us, around us, and through us, so that we never do go out alone, and we go out with the assurance of a God who promises to never leave us or forsake us. We lift all these prayers up in the name of Jesus, as well as those on the hearts, on our hearts, as we pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the very night in which he was betrayed, took bread. After he gave thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. In the same way also he took the cup after supper and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. These are God's gifts for his people. If you believe that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior, if you believe that you are broken and sinful and in need of the forgiveness that this meal offers, and you believe that Jesus is truly here because he promises to be so in his words, then come, for these are indeed gifts of God for you. You may be seated. the foot of the cross where grace and suffering meet you have shown me your love through the judgment you've received and you've won my heart and you've won Trade these ashes in for beauty And wear forgiveness like a crown Coming to kiss the feet of mercy I lay every burden down At the foot of the cross At the foot of the cross Yes, you've won my heart. Now I can trade these ashes in for beauty and wear forgiveness like a crown. Coming to kiss the feet of mercy, I lay every burden down. 
foot of the cross. And you've won my And you've won my heart. Now I can trade these ashes in for beauty and wear forgiveness like a crown. Coming to kiss the feet of mercy, I lay every Came sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Amen. Rescue for sinners, ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, His body the bread. His blood, the wine, broken and poured out, all for love. And the whole earth trembled, and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so amazing. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners. Ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. All our hope is in you. All the glory to you, God, the light of the world, Jesus Messiah, the name above all names, blessed Redeemer. Emmanuel, the 
rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, Jesus Messiah. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, will die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you in all I do. I honor you. Please stand. Now may this true body and blood strengthen and keep you now and forevermore. Depart in his peace, knowing indeed all of your sins have been forgiven. And may you go from here always willing to serve him. Amen. We continue with our sending today. As God's family, we are called and gathered to worship, grow, and be sent to make a difference in the world for Christ. Go out into the world knowing who you are and whose you are. Amen. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the